We worked with KPMG earlier in the year and launched a report about innovation through craft. Now, that's um, very noble and uh, wordy and um, thoroughly researched report. It's in your bags. It's, as you've already heard, is your bedtime reading. Um, but we're a visual sector, right? So um, alongside that report, which I do also commend to you, um, we worked with Daniel Charney and his studio from now on to produce a visual infographic of uh, what we discovered in that research and what we want to do with it. So I'm going to quite quickly uh, take you through this. So uh, there we go. So this is the journey we're on. And we're going to go from the bottom right-hand corner uh, to the top left-hand corner. So um, we started off by saying that uh, craft, and particularly craft in the UK, has a set of special features that together, in combination, are unique. So those include um, absolutely um, an attention to quality and skillfulness, um, and also an, an, an a certain ingenuity and ingeniousness in mindset. Um, of course, deep material specialism, an embodied human emotional approach to materials, though. Um, problem solving and that experimentation and iteration I already talked about. Now, lots of people from lots of different fields will say, hey, I do that. You know, I'm a psychologist. I have deep human values. I'm a dancer. I'm embodied. You know, lots, we can... Many sectors have many of those, but what we're arguing is that craft uniquely has all of those in combination. And at the moment, in our society, that's undervalued, and what that means is we're not really reaping the potential benefits from that. So if you bring those unique qualities into what's being described as Industry 4.0, the new industrial revolution, this moment where technologies are transforming how things are made, where they're made, and so on, um, and you bring those entrepreneurial skills, let's think back to um, the genius of, of Wedgwood as a marketeer, then you really create the conditions for new breakthroughs. And we need to do that in a field of open innovation, and in collaboration. We identified in the report several sectors that are ripe for this area. Um, they also align with some of the government's priority sectors. Um, and also, they also relate to uh, some of the topics we'll be exploring together over these next two days. But to really reap the benefits, there are some barriers in the way. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to take you. Don't get, don't get sort of seasick with this. But, um, so, we've got three barriers. I think there are some more, um, in, well, there are some more in the report, but we've you know, simplified them down to three. One is that lots of people don't know about all of this innovation that's already happening. Lots of makers don't know, lots of scientists don't know, government doesn't know. That's one of the reasons we're doing Makeshift, is to raise awareness. It's also why we're publishing reports and doing research. So we need to raise more awareness to open people's minds to the possibilities. Another is the crisis in craft education. I think we're all very familiar with that. Um, I'm not going to go into that in depth right now. Um, but the third is creating those opportunities where people from different sectors can meet each other, discover what their common interests are or what's a common challenge or problem I might want to work on with you, um, and then take that forward. So we want to create more opportunities for collaboration through investment. We, we the Cross Council, are doing that through our parallel practices project. And many of the um, both scientists and makers who are working on that project are speaking here over the two days. Um, but there are lots of other opportunities. And from a Cross Council perspective, it's about us um, facilitating the field. It's not about us only doing it. Many, many people should be involved in this. So... You address those barriers, you can, and then the race is on. Um, and the results are um, more and better innovation. Um, this, as you can imagine, uh, with a report produced by KPMG, focuses very much on the economic aspects of it. I'm going to broaden it out in a moment, but just bear that in mind that that's why we've uh, focused here on those sides. So new products, new services... Um, greater productivity and uh, differentiation in international markets. Um, and if you harness that, then you're creating more wealth. So that, that's the story we're telling. And as Rosie said, we want to work on this strategically. 
So, this is the last bit of this uh, uh, bit. If you're getting any motion sickness, I think we'll stop in a moment. Um, so, what we're saying at the moment is that, and I think you'll hear this um, in, in Makeshift, and many of you sitting here will know this, is that um, when those collaborations occur, they often occur by happy accident, that someone knows someone else, he knows that person and two people get introduced and then they start working together. Or someone walks by or you read a book and, and of course it's great that those happy accidents happen. We want to make more of them happen so we need to become more accident prone, right? Um, so we need to invest in those um, addressing those three barriers and the detailed barriers underneath those that are outlined in the report. And if we strategically invest in that, then the vision is that we create an innovation culture where the value of making and material skills is valued as much as every other kind of knowing, every other epistemology, so that we create a world where we can solve some of the wicked problems that we face. <laughs> 